I've got three tips for you. Three ideas about how to help decide what to get the board game enthusiast in your life. Before I start the list, these three ideas are perfect for somebody getting a gift for the person in their life who loves board games. But if you, most of my audience, are also board game fans, this actually might be a helpful way to start thinking about what to give your, your friends who may or may not love board games. And if they do, the list is the same as ever. If they don't, these three ideas are still going to help you to start thinking of ideas because they just translate well to both. So hopefully this list is helpful. To me, a perfect gift is one that I can share with the person who gave it to me. Something that not only I will enjoy, but we can enjoy together. For that reason, rather than just buying somebody one of the board games on their wish list, I highly recommend that you give them something that you can enjoy with them. And while that may be a completely new board game, I wonder if what would be even more meaningful is if you consider what board games you love to play with them already, and then buy them an expansion for that game, or some upgraded components to overall increase the experience. That way, when you go back to playing your favorite game to play together, you've got new components or um, an, an expansion that gives you even more content that you can both enjoy together. If, for instance, you love playing Spirit Island with this person, maybe if they don't have it already, grab the Branching Claw expansion, which adds so much new ways to play and even more spirits and such. And most games have expansions like that, that, that really add to the game and make it even better. Do a little bit of research and ask which expansions are the best for whatever game in question. But if you're completely content with the content there is already and you don't really feel the need to get an expansion, I still think that it'd be so meaningful if you bought them something to upgrade that experience of playing the specific game. Like if you love playing Root with your with this person. I keep saying this person. I don't know if that's should I give them a name? John. We'll call him John. If you love playing Root with John, if you love playing Root together, maybe grab the the playmat for Root so you're not playing on the board anymore. It's a nice new playmat that makes the gameplay even more just feel good to play and just completely upgrades the experience. If you already know all about what kind of board game upgrades there are, you can go ahead and skip to this section of the video because I'm just gonna be explaining to you what you can look for in an upgrade, what is a general kind of upgrade. But if you do not know where to even start, this will be a little guide for you on how to both find the perfect component upgrades for you as well as what they even might be. So I'll get into that right now. In general, your board game accessories and upgrades will come in three categories, organization, ease of play and just better components wait there's another there's another category just remember the last category is um protection a lot of games have accessories for all three of these categories so whichever ones sound the most interesting then go for those i know a lot of people have a specific game that they really really love and they're like why i'm just gonna make this the best possible and they're gonna get um, all of those kinds of things. Organization component upgrades are mostly things like an insert that essentially will make it much easier to both clean up and put away as well as bring out to the table and set up. And that kind of upgrade mostly just makes it much easier to get the game to the table which is honestly huge because setting it up and cleaning it up is a drag and a lot of times the best upgrades, the best investments you can make in a game is to just streamline those aspects and buying something like an insert is a huge way to do that. The next type of board game upgrade is um, ease of play upgrades. These are things like trays and overlays such as this one that essentially make the game easier to play because you have places for everything and it's just a lot more understandable and streamlined as well as sometimes tokens can go everywhere but certain overlays will make it that the tokens fit in nice and perfectly so that won't be a problem. This will just make the the playing of the game that much more enjoyable. You ha don't have to worry about those things anymore. The third kind is essentially upgrades that make the game either feel better or look better to play. Things like play mats or nicer meeples or metal coins, they simply just add to the experience of playing the game and again, make it that much better. And when you play a game 50, 100 times, Getting those components just, again, makes it better and it's completely worth it because of how much you love the game. The last kind of component upgrade is 
protective things. One protective upgrade that I use for almost every game that I play, at least a lot, is card sleeves. And card sleeves are something that are, to me, almost essential. Not only do card sleeves protect the cards and make them last longer, but also it makes shuffling way easier. You can just shuffle it so much nicer than just than a riffle shuffle. On top of that, to me, it just feels better in my hands to play with sleeved cards, so sleeving a game is just huge. Most component upgrades actually land in more than one of the categories, but those are just the four general types of things that you can get to upgrade your game. Um, whatever sounds the most enticing, go for something like that. If you want something organizational, get an insert. If you want something that makes the game just feel nicer, get a playmat or nicer bits. Bits is what they call it, right? <laughs> if you want the game to last longer, get some card sleeves. You might be wondering where you even can find these upgraded components or expansions, um, and I would love to help you out with that if you don't know. One of my favorite places to start looking for upgraded components for your favorite board games is on Etsy. On Etsy, you can find some really great products at the same time as supporting small businesses, creators who love what they do. So to me, it's one of the best ways to upgrade your game experiences. This is the thing about shopping for upgraded components. You start to, at least for me, you start wanting all of them. Terra Mystica player bags? That would be so nice. I'm, okay, I'm open link a new tab. <laughs> This is a dangerous place for me to be right now. More Terra Mystica bags? Simply go to Etsy and search root board game or whatever board game you're trying to upgrade. In this case, maybe we'll look at root stuff and you see things like inserts, um, which is the organization for the game. Super nice. More pieces, um, upgrade kits that make the game pieces much nicer and 3D, for instance. There's just a lot of different things and you just look at them and see what interests you. Or if you want to even include the person you're buying the gift for in the conversation, feel free. It doesn't have to be a surprise. Um, root Christmas ornaments? What the frick? Oh my gosh. These are so cute. Oh my gosh. I might have to buy these for everybody in my whole life. You can find a lot of great things on Etsy. Again, just search whatever game you want to upgrade. Maybe you want to do an Eons End board game upgrade. Find things like a tray for your for, so for all your components, um, which, um, funny enough, we actually have those. And things like this seriously make the game even more fun to play. It just makes it feel even nicer. And when it's a game you play a lot, it goes a long way. All of these are great ways to upgrade your game experience. And again, to me, is one of the best gifts you can give someone because you are gonna enjoy it with them. Whatever it is that you love doing with whoever you wanna buy a gift for, consider buying them something that pertains to that so you can both enjoy it together. We are about to jump into the second gift idea, but first, drop a like down below if you're enjoying this video and if this is a helpful guide for you. Liking or even disliking our videos and commenting down below is a wonderful way to support our channel. If you enjoy our content, if you love board games, then um, we really appreciate it and we love that you're here watching our videos. Go ahead and drop a comment below what games or whatever you want is at the top of your Christmas wish list right now. For me, I think, I actually don't know. I need to make a list, right? <laughs> Every single board gamer has an ever-growing list of games that they want to buy. But some of those games stay on that list for a long time and may never leave the list because it's really easy to convince yourself. Let me backtrack. It's actually way easier to convince yourself you need to buy a game. But often with specific games, it's really easy to say, that game's a little too expensive. I don't think I'm gonna buy it. And then you just never do. This gift idea is silly, but buy them that game. Buy them one of the games that they keep on wanting to buy. It's their dream to have that game, but they just refuse to, they just aren't gonna do it. Obviously, I don't expect that anyone should do this and that it's not a requirement to spend more money to make it a better gift, but really what's happening here is you're buying something for them because they convince themselves that they shouldn't buy it. And if someone really, really wants something but doesn't wanna buy it, sometimes buying that thing for them just means a whole lot. It just means a lot as well as it's gonna be hopefully a lot of fun to have that thing. There are some people that I know who are like that about anything and they, they they're really such a such a saver that there's things that are not even that expensive that they feel this way about and honestly those 
meet this criteria. It's not about how expensive it is. It's more about getting somebody a gift that they really want but don't want to buy is incredibly meaningful and again has nothing to do with board games. If you have a friend and you have the money to spare, just listen and hear what they they go, oh I really want that but it's just too expensive. Just consider it because it might be a fantastic gift to give them. Let me know down in the comments below what that is for you, the things that you go, oh my gosh I really want that but it's too expensive. Let me know what that is for you, if it's board games, if it's whatever it is. I'm really curious to hear what those things are for you. The third and final gift idea is for those who really don't have a lot of money to spend, especially not enough to buy the, the most expensive thing in the world, like the last tip suggested. This is board game gift ideas on an incredible budget because this one costs nothing. This one only costs your time, which is valuable. A absolutely it's valuable and that's why it's significant that's why it's still a gift my third idea is to simply give them your time give them an evening give them a whole Saturday and just say we can play whatever you want to play or we can watch whatever movie you want to watch for me quality time is my number one love language um, and I do love gifts as well but physical affirmation is good too uh, there's a lot of good love languages, <laughs> but quality time is my number one and while of course I want to get gifts, that time spent with somebody where I get to do what I want to do with them, that's mean, that means a lot and that's so refreshing and so, so fun and exciting. First of all, because you get to have that time with them, but at the same time you get to play what you want. As a board gamer, there is so many more games and so many more new games that you buy than you can ever really fully, fully enjoy. Um, I'm never gonna be able to play all the games that I wanna play as much as I wanna play them. And that is, um, it's hard to fathom, but also it's okay. Um, but every single time that I get to just play that, my favorite game or play um, something that I just don't get to play enough, like Teach You or Key Flower or whatever, or just that game that's been on my shelf of shame for months and months that I just, seem to have a hard time playing or getting to the table having that just open space where i can decide whatever i want to play that'd be awesome that's super great um and like the other two tips it has nothing to do with board games incidentally it would be good for board gamers because they they do love to do those kinds of things like play games with you but if you're getting a gift for someone who doesn't love board games or maybe they do love board games and also love anime and want to watch their favorite anime movie or something like whatever the case is give them your time give them an evening give them a Saturday um, that's gonna mean the world that's gonna be the most meaningful thing you can give them I think it's the most valuable one on this list hopefully this guide was able to just help you to get some ideas flowing on what to get somebody whether or not again it has anything to do with board games yeah let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed this kind of more casual sit down video where we just talk about a, a concept. Today we talked about what kind of gifts are good. To recap, the first one is something you can share and do with that person. The second one is something that they really, really want but just keep convincing themselves not to get. Um, and the third thing is to just give them your time. If you are still looking for gift ideas, specific games, we have a list of five great small games that can all fit in a stocking that we made last year. So check that out and I'll see you in that video.